This here is my McCulloch Eager Beaver Super 2318AV, 2.3 cubic inches, or about 38cc. It's got an 18 inch bar, takes an S60 chain, and it's totally sacked out. It's a complete piece of shit and the oiler don't work. A uh, family friend gave this to me uh, when he moved to, he sold his house and started renting a condo, and so uh, he didn't need a chainsaw. He didn't need a chainsaw to begin with because, you know, he lived in a suburb, but, you know, free chainsaw, so I'm not going to complain. And, uh, yeah, she's just uh, sacked out royally. Um, oiler done work. I've replaced the oiler. Still done work. Don't really know what's up with it, so I've just got that oil can, and I just squirt oil on it whenever I remember and uh, buy a new chain, you know, every, you know, five hours I use the thing. Uh, I've redone the fuel system twice primer bulbs rotten out twice when I got it primer bulb was gone all the fuel lines were gone um, all the oil lines were gone as well it's probably why the oiler doesn't work I had to get in there replace the oiler um, not too long ago and it still seems like it's not working and so yeah so I'm just gonna show you the state of affairs it's got tons of, of uh, smoky blow by so I'm uh, sure it was run with the not the right kind of two-stroke oil or something. It's all sorts of messed up, but uh, it cuts. Cuts about as well as a, as a 30 cc. Um, you know that that 18 inch chain ain't doing it any favors. But yeah, still cuts. We're gonna cut on this uh, three-year-old piece of live oak limb, which uh, fell out of this here tree. It's been up there since Hurricane Irma. And yeah, we're gonna see how it does. Uh, those of you that don't know, uh, live oak is an absolute uh, pain in the ass to split, and it's pretty bad to cut. It's very hard, very dense, very tough. Uh, you see how it grows? Just sinuousy, serpentine. It's like a snake. Like, just look. Look at that. Yeah, it uh, takes a six-pound maul to split, you know, a four-inch piece of cordwood that's eight inches tall. But, uh, burns pretty good. Burns very long. Very dense wood. Uh, just, uh... Needs a lot of heat. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a pain in the neck to cut with a chainsaw because uh, it does this. So you just kind of have to roll the branch every once in a while. Just cut everything that's above the ground and then wait for it to fall over on you and try and break your knee. And uh, just keep going at it. So uh, I'm going to go get some uh, bar oil and some gas. Uh, filler not quite up. Just put about a quarter in there because uh, it all leaks out the bottom because it's got this uh, beautiful two-piece case and uh the oil reservoir and the gas res or the oil reservoir is two piece i think gas reservoir is too so uh, they both leak like a son of a bitch which is great great design yeah uh, basically what i'm trying to say is this is a complete piece of shit and it's uh totally sacked out and uh done work worth the damn and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna try and see if i can get that oil system working because it's basically unusable because uh i've got to oil the thing like every cut and it's, uh, it's just a pain in the neck. And uh, I've got a refurbed Husqvarna that I'm using, which is uh, kind of shitty, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, best chainsaw I've ever used was a uh, Echo uh, CS370. That thing was awesome. It was, it was like 37cc, 16-inch bar. It took all the abuse I threw at it. I had that at a place where I worked. Um, I learned how to, how to cut wood on that thing. And, uh, yeah, I was cutting this stuff for, like, three months straight because they hired me, like, four weeks after Hurricane Matthew. And then I was there for Hurricane Irma, and I think I was still there for Hurricane Dorian. But, yeah, I got my money's worth out of that thing, and it was still run like a dream after th three years of abuse. So let's get this damn thing fired up. All right, I'm going to show you startup procedure on this thing, and uh, then we're going to start cutting on this here limb. So, just sort of bog standard, prime the fuel bowl until it's firm, which it never is because it's got a terrible fuel system that doesn't seal. Put choke on, put start on, lock the trigger, make sure your lock is on, and uh, preemptively just get all sorts of garbage up on this bar, just so it doesn't run dry. Now, get your foot on it, 
get your hand on it, get your ear protection in, and send it. Put her on half choke. Now, as you can see, she's spitting nothing. So even though I got a brand new oiler on there, it just it just won't pick up oil and it just won't move it. So uh, I'm gonna disassemble this thing again and see if the plastic worm gear on that oiler has uh, disintegrated. Or if possibly I just have a blockage in the line, but I blew compressed air through there and I couldn't find anything. But uh, we're going to tear into this sunbitch and uh, see where the problem truly lies. Alright, so I'm going to show you the disassembly process here for the Eager Beaver. Uh, in order to do practically all the disassembly on this, uh, you're going to need a 7 uh, wrench or a socket, a flathead screwdriver, and a T25 Torx bit. You don't don't need an impact gun, but uh, I've got one, so I'm going to use that. You can do all this with hand tools. It's it's pretty. The fasteners are pretty straightforward. The the chainsaw itself is not so much. Now the first part of this disassembly you're going to want to do is you're going to want to pull the bar and chain off just to make your life easier. So in order to do that, you need to disengage your uh, chain clutch, and then you need to remove these two 7/16 bolts. And I believe you need to remove these two T25 screws as well. And that'll allow you to pull the, the chain and the bar off, uh, along with the entire clutch assembly. So uh, let me do that real quick. These two screws here are captive, and that's like the only two captive screws on the whole deck of chainsaw. But once you do that, the clutch comes off, just set that aside. And you should just be able to push the bar in. Well, pull, pull it off of the tensioner down there, push it in a little bit, take your chain off the tip of the bar, lift that up, and pull the bar right out. Then take the chain push around the back of the pulley, pull that off, drop your bolt on the ground, and you're good to go. 
Now, what I like to do, uh, just because I'm anal retentive, is I like to put the nuts right back on, and I don't believe they'll get in the way. Now, the next thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to drain all of the fuel out and then all the bar oil out. This is the bar oil down here. This is the fuel up here. Uh, I prefer to do the fuel first just because this thing doesn't seal particularly well, so when you turn it over and tip it, it likes to dump fuel places. So the easy way to do that is just get yourself an appropriate container uh, and a funnel, which I have over here. And just take the cap off. Does not stay on because I think that part's missing on mine. And yeah, just start dumping fuel out. And uh, you will spill it everywhere. So uh, just, yeah, be ready. Luckily, I was smart enough to not put anything in here. And I think I drained most of it back out. But to get every last drop, you're also need to you're also going to need to tip it pretty much all the way up, and then run your primer bulb. Okay, I'm not quite doing it right. You gotta turn it around until a point where, like that, where your fuel pickup is not picking up any more fuel, and you can empty the primer bulb, and then just dump that little bit out too. And just put the cap on for the minute. Now move on to the bar oil. Alright, this will take a lot longer, especially because it's like 30 something out. So, fun. And uh, I've just got a Moe's cup. Oh yeah, there we go. More in there than I thought I put. So, uh, yeah. Um, if uh, you want to be uh, really safe about keeping your workbench clean, uh, at this point you should uh, like set it down like this, balance it on something, get it set up so that it can, you know, drain while you wait, and uh, then go out and uh, like get dinner or something. Let it drip for an hour or seven. All right, that's pretty good. I had a lot more in there than I thought it did. And uh, yeah, feel free to save this. Um, I probably shouldn't reuse this because it's full of sawdust and metal shavings and bar, bar oil that I scooped up out the bottom of the thing, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway. Alright, next step is to remove your air filter housing. So just take this, I like to turn it over, and then I take the choke lever off and just jam that down in there and I don't believe you need to do anything on the carburetor like you don't need to take out the air filter or this top cover to get down in there alright now that you got this uh, top cover off of the carburetor you're going to want to flip her over and remove one of these two screws from the vibration suspension Either side doesn't doesn't matter which of these two, but you got to remove one from each spring. Now, flip her over, and you're going to want to remove these two up here to remove your handle. These are a different thread pitch and size than the other ones. That'll allow you to remove your handle. Set that to the side. There, uh, there are square nuts in there that will fall out. So what I like to do, once again, anal retentive, I like to just thread these bolts into the handle so I don't lose the special bolts for the special nuts. And uh, these are supposed to be spring-loaded, but uh, they don't sometimes load. Anyway, get those the hell out your way. And now, you're going to want to remove these... How did I show you the thing? You're going to want to remove these three screws. These two are fairly easy. This guy is a little bit tricky. you got to get up in here with your thumb and just sort of 
wedge these two apart and it really helps if you got an impact gun because it'll just push itself through but there's this little plastic and rubber piece down in here that that head will try and catch on it's easier to put in than it is take off and if for whatever reason you can't seem to get that to come off you have to take all of these these five screws out pull this cover off take it out and then put this cover back on just so you don't mess up this trigger mechanism which is also tied into your throttle cable up here Not lucky there. Get the screwdriver to pop it out though. Alright, now that you've done that, you want to get your excessively long extension. You don't need one this excessively long, but uh, I don't have one that's uh, not excessively long handy. And you're going to want to get these two T25 screws over there. Helps if you've got a ah, tight fitting bit. Or a magnetic bit. Right, now you're going to need to take the cap off of your bar oil. And if you're lucky, you should be able to pull this out. However, this handle may fight you, and if it does, you have to take these five screws out, pick it up real quick, pull this cover off, and then put it back on so you don't mess up the throttle. I'm going to see if I'm lucky or not. Does not appear that I'm lucky. Actually, no. You can't be lucky. You have to take it off to get this rubber shock absorber out of the way. I'm just leaving these in here because I'm going to put them right back on. And you don't want to take this off of the chainsaw because it is connected to your trigger as well as your emergency stop. So you just want to get this top cover the heck out of the way. And there you go. And if you wanted to replace your primer bulb or either fuel line going into your gas tank, this is how you would do it. And I will tell you, they're an absolute pain in the ass. So this is going to be the least fun part of the entire thing. Now, in order to get this out of the way, you are going to have to disconnect the fuel line from your carburetor or from your primer bulb. And don't mix those two up. They, they go to very different things. I am going to reassemble this handle just because I don't want it to fall apart on me but you could just take that entire thing apart disconnect the throttle which I wouldn't recommend because it won't end up in the same place and you will have to adjust it and you can unplug the the start stop switch as well but why bother so now I've gotten it this far and once again if you want to do your primer bulb or you want to do the fuel lines in your carburetor because these do rot, rot out and fall off. That's why I got this because all the fuel lines had rotten off. So that's why the fellow gave it to me. Uh, if you want to do your ignition coil, you needed to get in here and change the filter on your um, oil reservoir. I guess you could fish that out, but uh, it'd probably fight you a lot. And so yeah, that, that's as far as you got to take it. And the next step is you got to take this half inch nut off down there. Uh, this will let you uh, take the flywheel off and uh, sometimes with an impact gun if you're lucky you can cheese it and you can just give it a quick wrap and it'll uh, pop right off uh, at least the nut will. I got lucky that's because I've done this before so it's not super corroded on there and you're gonna want to see if your flywheel will come off. It may come off it may not come off but you have to get it off to get to the oiler. Alright, I just stuck the screwdriver on there. I like to live dangerously, and I pried the flywheel off. Oh, okay, good. Luckily, luckily it is keyed, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and make sure you don't lose that key. Uh, it might come off, and uh, you'll be SOL if it does. Now that you have the flywheel off, as you can see, here's the oiler. 
And this is what I got in here and replaced before. And we're going to see if that's ruined again. That's pretty loose. These are also a different kind of thread. These are the same thing that's holding that handle on. So make sure you put them somewhere else and you don't try and put those plastic ones in there. It'll take this, uh, wherever the hell this is, doohickey off. And now you can get the third and final, final bolt off to remove your oiler. All right, there you go. If you want to replace the oiler, be as easy as that. And uh, once you do that, you just have to pop this oil line off here. And this oil line off here. Come on now. For something covered in oil, you sure are <clears throat> not lubricated. There you go. All right. Now, as you can see here, this oiler is still intact. So that is not my oiling issue. That must mean that I have a clogged passageway, and I don't know if that's in the oiler or not. So in order to test this sucker, I'm going to get some compressed air and see if I can blow air in through here, through the inlet, and get it to come out the outlet. Or at the very least, I'm going to spin it and see what the hell happens. And this right here, by the way, this is your worm gear for this guy. So uh, don't don't lose that. Uh, well, it can't come off because of the key. So uh, yeah, you really have to fuck up to lose that. All right, now watch this. If I spin this, look at that. Oil comes out. So my oiler's fine. Yours may not be. My mine originally was not. That means I got a clog somewhere in this line. And uh, I gotta figure that out. So uh, stand by while I uh, go get the. Uh, Air sucker pusher blower 9000 out. Alright, the oil passageway should be somewhere up here. Look at all this crap. And uh, I've just got the uh, boy up to 50 psi for no good reason. And uh, we're going to hook this up and uh, see if shit comes out. Well, that's just fucking clear. So, what the hell is the problem now, chainsaw? Alright, we're going to try that uh, backwards. Well, that's just fine, so why the heck aren't you oiling? So anyway, as you can see, there is no absolutely no problem with my oiling system, and for some reason, this chainsaw just ain't oiling. I wonder if this gear is supposed to be connected to something, or if it's just supposed to free ball. Maybe this is supposed to have a gasket on it. Mine just sort of does whatever. Maybe we got a 64th of an inch of play in it. So anyway, if you want to fix the oiler in your uh, whatever the hell this chainsaw is, again, your McCulloch Eager Beaver Super 2318 AV with anti-vibration and a 2.3 cubic inch engine, now you can. Uh, I got this replacement oiler off of eBay for like 12 bucks or something like that, and uh, for some reason it's not working. I wonder if it's pushing oil like back into the reservoir or something. I don't know. Everything spins correctly, so uh, I don't know what's wrong with this thing. Uh, for some reason, it's uh, still not pushing oil. And if it is pushing oil, it's pushing so little that it doesn't seem to make any difference at all. And, uh, yeah. She's just uh, right fucked. So uh, I'm just going to put everything back together and uh, then close out this video. Well, uh, I just found this uh, washer in here, and I got absolutely no idea where the hell this came from, so uh, I'm just going to put it underneath this uh, this bolt here for the oiler, uh, because I cannot imagine where the hell it came from other than there. And uh, we'll see if that clearances, and if it doesn't... Oh, I know where it came from. It came from here. No, it didn't. The fuck? I got no idea where that came from once again. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to put it there and uh, assume that's where it came from because uh, I just don't care anymore. This thing is going to become a go-kart or a gas-powered bicycle if it doesn't start shaping up. Well, the flywheel drag, so we're going to assume it wasn't supposed to be there.
All right, now I've got the flywheel back on, and I just want you to watch right here and see if anything comes out for me. Fucking shit, just slice my finger open. All right, so I've got the flywheel hooked back up, and I'm just spinning it over, and I'm going to see if anything comes out of this Euler passage. Doesn't look like anything's coming yet. I did just try and spin it over backwards, and then I sliced the tip of my finger open. So that's fun. Still nothing. I feel like it's that worm gear. I feel like that's supposed to have like an O-ring or something in it, something to give it a little bit more friction. Or maybe I'm just out of bar oil. There was like none in there, so. All right, so uh, we're just gonna pretend that it's working and uh, continue on with the reassembly. Alright, now here's the most fun part, because this requires uh, three hands, two men, a small boy, and one uh, Irish wolfhound in order to get it back together. Um, you're going to need to put this cover back on here while simultaneously lining up this fuel line into this slot and through and into the fuel tank while having this disassembled and set aside and hovering in midair so that you can line up this post down here into here and this rubber bushing over here down into this while clamping this down and keeping the throttle together and lining it up over the top of uh, your bar oil container and getting all the screws lined up at the same time. So uh, I'm going to try and do that with a hole in my finger and a shop bandage on it. And uh, wish me luck. Uh, I'd give you some advice but uh, I need the help myself so uh, I'm keeping it to myself. back up to your carburetor. All right, that was the easy part. Get this up and out and this down and over and this onto that. Now I've got to somehow hold this up. Let me see if I can show you a little bit of this nightmare. I'm going to get some needle nose pliers and see if they'll save my bacon. Now, down in here is your return line from your primer bulb, which is behind my head. There it is. It's all pinched up in there, and you got to feed this through this bottom slot in the fuel tank oh just like that holy shit that's the easiest that's ever been while also making sure you don't take it off of the primer bulb and now that you miraculously got that in there somehow you gotta could jiggle all of this back into place oh and there went the throttle assembly well not doing that oh shit I gotta figure out how this goes back together now you obviously go in here, you must go like that. I think. On there. Alright, that's back together. Alright. Alright, can you please not do that? Thank you. There we are. Now that's on there, and this is on here. And that's over yonder, but what I want to know is who's this caveman? This goes back together. All right, let's go for broke. Let's go for the pain in the neck screw over here on the corner. 
This guy right here, which you remember from episode two of the anime. Ooh, you have to do one of these to get it to see. Come on now. There we are. Get all three of these ready. I'm going to put the cap for the bar oil back on. Just for the hell of it. Now, throughout all of this, you may have noticed that this is a piece of shit chainsaw, and you would be right. Alright, now why are you doing that? Alright, buddy. Bucko. Yep, yep, there it is. Pinch the fuel line, that's why. See, I told you. There it is. Now the fuel line is where it's supposed to be, so this case should do. Okay, you're not doing the thing I want you to do. Hey, am I pinching a throttle cable? Oh, there it is. I am pinching one of the... wires for the starter cable. See, I told you. Two men, a small boy, an Irish uh, wolfhound, three hands, and a whole lot of luck. Okay, buddy. Now where is your hang-up? Alright, we're just going to run this home. Alright, that fixed it. Don't know what the problem was, but uh, Nothing a little bit of torque can't break. And uh, I got no idea what any of the torque specs are on this. I just uh, go until it uh, stops. And uh, you are screwing into plastic nine times out of ten. So, uh, you know, don't, don't do more than 20 foot pounds. Um, I mean, I do every single time, but that's just because I'm done. That sounds like it's stripped. Yeah, see, that's why you don't do that, because that one's stripped. It's either that or my doohickey is done got stuck in. You okay? Yeah, no, no, yeah, that one's stripped, so, uh, good. I didn't want it to be threaded anyway. Alright, primer bulb works. Tighten this. Turn her back around. Let's get our suspension hooked up. Alright. Get your handle. Still don't know where that washer came from. Generally, I never end up with parts left over, but uh, for this McCulloch, I'll make a special exception. Anyway, it's all pretty much standard, straightforward, putting stuff back together other than that shell. One last bolt. Come on now. Come on here. There you go. Now you got the meat and potatoes mostly back together. I don't know why there's so much slop in that flywheel, but we're going to not care. Put this guy back on. This is your one short plastic screw for the cover for the carburetor, which I'm just now realizing that y'all didn't take apart because uh, there was another cut of this where I uh, accidentally disassembled a bunch of stuff I wasn't supposed to. So yeah, just stick your choke back in. It's a dog leg. You just go in perpendicular then rotate drops back in drop the cover back on it's got captive bolts zip zip goes into nuts so you can give it a little you can go nuts trigger still works 
Primer is still pulling fuel. No idea if the oiler works. Recoil starter appears to maybe work. All right, yeah. Let's, uh, let's put this chain back on. <sighs> All right, chain goes on first. Make sure you do it the correct direction. Chainsaw chains rotate clockwise from the right side. The cutting surface of the chain, this guy right here. For all you people out there, I know it sounds stupid but uh i both myself and my father have put chainsaw chains on backwards uh back when we didn't know how to operate chainsaws which is now but it can happen to you and uh, you can try and cut through a two-foot tree only to realize that you got chain on backwards so make sure you do that pop it off your tensioner get it over the front of the bar which you can't see and you probably will not be able to get it back on the tensioner with the appropriate tension that you had it dialed in with. Let me see if I can be obstinate and get it to work. All right, I'm not lucky, which means you have to get in here, right over here where you can't see, and there is a flathead screw lined up like this with the chain, and you're gonna wanna loosen that in order to slip your tensioner. All right, there I go. And I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more just because I can. It's America. I do what I want. All right. Now put your cover back on. Make sure your clutch is disengaged or uh, it will fight you the entire time and you'll wonder why it's fighting you. Now put your 7 16th nuts back on and your T25 screws and you'll be golden. And make sure to store it with the uh, Chain clutch engaged because you don't want to accidentally start it and cut your leg off. All right, I almost forgot the most important part, uh, setting your uh, chain tension. Make sure you have these guys down here loose, but not super loose, enough that you can pick up your bar like this. Now you're going to want to pick up in the middle of your bar and lift. And now grab the bottom of the chain and pull. If you can pull more than one tooth out of the bar, too loose. And the reason why you're picking up like this is because that's how you're going to be cutting. When you cut with a chainsaw, you press down on the log, so your bar goes up. So you need to set your tension with the bar up. And you can also check on the top, that's usually the easiest way, and you see, that's way too loose. So I'll show you what tight is supposed to look like. That's what you should be looking for. This will keep your chain where it needs to be and it'll prevent your chain from getting pinched. And as your chain heats up, it'll get a little bit more slack and it'll be perfect. So you always wanna go a little bit tight because otherwise when your chain heats up, you'll have way too much slack and it'll be flapping and flopping and pinching and slapping all over the place. All right, there we are. That's perfect. All right, are just a little bit too tight. Uh, sometimes when you tighten down on the bar, it recenters everything and it messes with your tension just a little bit. So always reconfirm. But that's where I like to have it because then when everything heats up and the longer longer your bar and the longer your chain, the longer, um, the, more, the more of a gap you're going to have. This is an 18 inch bar and for 18s and 16s, that's the tightness I like to see. And yeah. Now that I got her back together, uh, I'm going to put a little bit more gas in her, put my bar oil right back in. The, the oil reservoir on this just does not hold oil, which is nice. And uh, I'm going to start her on a different day because it's like 10 o'clock at night right now and I'm not going to be starting a two-stroke two chainsaw in my backyard in the neighborhood because uh, that's a dick move. All right, so we got her back out here without the bar on and uh, I'm just going to fire it up and see if anything comes spewing out that oiler. Uh, hopefully it should, and if it doesn't, I think the issue has to be that worm gear because I don't know what what else could be causing it. So, uh, guess let's get to it. Wish me luck.
Well, I don't know about you, but it looks like a whole lot of not working. So I'm gonna go back to the drawing board. I'm gonna try and figure out what that issue is with the worm gear because I've confirmed that the oiler works. I've confirmed that oil flows through the tube. I've confirmed that it goes through the filter and I've confirmed that air flows out of here. So I got no idea where that oil is going, but uh, it's, uh, it's certainly not going where it's supposed to be going. So, uh, yep, all I can think of is that that worm gear is uh, supposed to be tight to that shaft, and it is uh, very much not that. Yeah, I, I'm really, I really have no idea at this point. But, if your issue was just the oil pump, then uh, you're good. Uh, and if your issue is uh, whatever mine is having, then uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm in the same boat. Oh, well, hope this helped you in some capacity, and... Uh, yeah, remember to like, comment, tell me what you think is wrong with this worm gear, because uh, uh, I'm going to start troubleshooting that myself. And, uh, you know, make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of garbage. I don't know why you do, but uh, do it anyway. Till next time, Tom out. Well, I went home and I did some digging, and it looks like there's uh, supposed to be a spring in between uh, the flywheel and the worm gear that uh, pulls the flywheel out, pushes the worm gear back uh, up against the uh, crankshaft, uh, snugging up the uh the worm gear and uh you know pulling the crankshaft out the other way so that explains why there was so much slop in my crankshaft and uh, why the worm gear is uh not staying snug so uh i have no idea where that thing went um i'm confident i did not lose that the last time i took this apart and uh, you saw that it wasn't on there uh that time uh, the oiler has never worked on this thing since i got it and uh, I've only taken the flywheel off twice. And I took the flywheel off the first time because the oiler didn't work. So, uh, yeah, that's spooky. So anyway, uh, went and looked it up. And this spring is part number uh, MC224840. And it looks like you can uh, get a uh, used part off of uh, eBay for about 12 bucks. So I guess I'm going to try that and see if it fixes my problem. So, uh, that's another thing to look at, is to, uh, see, see if you get a spring there. Because, uh, I sure didn't. And, uh, that might have been the crux of, uh, of the problem. So, uh, yeah, I probably should have looked at this, uh, yesterday, before I went out there and, uh, tested on the chainsaw. You know, it only took me about five minutes to find the spring. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'll fix it at a later date. Uh, you're not going to get dragged along for that. So, uh, once again, Tom out.